So let's work on homework four. This is the first part, question one to question five. This chapter is about consumer and the producer surplus. Let's look at question one. Consumer's willingness to pay for a good is used to derive the what for that good. Well, for this chapter, um, we want to have the consumer surplus which is this uh, demand curve and uh, there can be a price. The area in between is the uh, this area in between will be the consumer surplus. Okay. And uh, the first part is that what we have done is to talk about what this demand curve is. It is consumers' what willingness to pay. Okay, producer surplus is the area between what the price, the price level, and the supply curve. Cost of production, we haven't talked about it yet. The supply curve is the supply curve is from the sellers, not from the buyers. Okay, let's look at question two. We need to have this table here. Okay, willingness to pay for basketball sneakers. That is hard commodity. The table willingness to pay for basketball sneakers shows each player, J C R R J, right? Each player's willingness to pay for basketball sneakers. Assume that each player wants to buy at most one pair of sneakers. If the price of basketball sneakers is one twenty-five, so one twenty-five is at where it's above. 120 and uh, it is here's 125 okay let's move it here it's above 120 and below 140 so let's write something here okay Then, if that is the price, which players will purchase the sneaker, right? You have to have the willingness to pay that is higher than the price. Then you can have the uh, buyer actually would like to buy, right? They would like to pay a price that is higher than 125. So which are those two? Pretty clear, right? Okay, now let's move to question three. Question three, table, consumer surplus. Use table, consumer surplus. Assume that each student wants to buy one ticket. If the price of a ticket to see the nutty nutcrackers is $75 and there is no other market for tickets, the total consumer surplus for the five students is. We want to know the total consumer surplus. The total consumer surplus. Here's the thing. I don't care what this play is called. I don't care about what I exactly who are they, all these students? You look at the first letter, L-M-N-O-P, that's it, okay? Uh, we abstract from the reality. It just gives you a scenario to set the application, right? So, price 75, here's the price, $75, $75. Right, 
two person would like to pay above seventy-five dollars, so they will buy, right? And uh, well, I still use this one. What do we have? We have basically one person M ninety minus seventy-five. That's what? That's M's consumer surplus. Okay, that's one person's consumer surplus. And then, well, you can actually do it from the top. Then you can look at L, right? Or you can look at L first. L's consumer surplus is what 100 minus 75 doesn't matter how high your willingness to pay is you pay the price 75 and then what you need to do is to sum these two differences up okay this is uh, 15 dollars right? 90 minus 75 100 minus 75 25 dollars how much is fifteen dollars? Let me do it. It's basically fifteen dollars plus twenty-five dollars. Okay. All right. Look at question four. This figure monthly demand for ice cream cones. Look at this demand. A demand is a actually a flow it's during a period of time okay it must be measured during a period of time right at this guide at this second I do not need ice cream right but over a one week I may have one or two okay so the graph monthly demand for ice cream cones shows one individual's linear monthly demand for ice cream cones at five dollars per cone, this is the uh, price. Five dollars. Five dollars. Okay, that's the price. Five dollars per cone. This individual will consume ten cones, and uh, here's the quantity. Ten cones in a month. How much consumer surplus does this consumer receive? Well, obviously, again. We try to do this. Here is the uh, area we need to calculate this triangle. To calculate this triangle, we have actually the formula, right? So it's the area of a triangle, right? It's the one half. Or let me use this the base times the height and divided by 2 what is the base is 10 10 and then times what the height is what you look at the top the top of this triangle is 15 the uh, bottom here is actually 5 so it is 15 minus 5 and then the whole thing divided by 2 which is 10 times 10 divided by 2 okay that is the area of this triangle which is the consumer surplus okay okay that's question 4 Let's look at question five. An increase in the consumer surplus in the market for milkshakes may result from an or a in the what of milkshakes? Well, obviously, this question is asking about any reason can cause an increase in the consumer surplus. So let's look at a picture. The question gave us one, two, three, four, four different reasons. 
and what we are looking for is basically this triangle okay this triangle here can become what bigger right it's basically going this way it can become bigger then that's my increase in the consumer surplus so we can consider this situation one by one Make it, oh, okay cannot change it increasing the price if I move it up increasing the price then I actually have a smaller triangle right this kind of uh, sh shrink the, the triangle actually cannot shrink smaller triangle increase in the supply this one increase this one you know was here and then the price and the equilibrium price and the quantity moved down okay now we see what consumer surplus increase right all right how about c decrease in demand now this was uh let's let's even just start from here and i can drag this down a little bit let's say decrease in demand this one moves down right this whole thing actually need to do what doesn't belong okay and we'll have to move it down further and then put it in a little bit put it down here the whole thing move out that's it okay um look it was here then come down to here you don't really have a increase in the consumer surplus smaller triangle something like that it was pretty big before this anyway um decrease in supply okay still make it here decrease in supply the supply shifted to the left and then this uh, consumer surplus area will go like that right the equilibrium price goes up and uh, equilibrium quantity decrease so that is uh, question five right which one give you an increase right all, all cases has been analyzed okay that's that much for question one to five in homework four